Today, we're going to have a conversation with a city council candidate, uh, Tammy Morales, right? That's right. Uh, Tommy, thank you for coming for uh, ETOE's media. My pleasure. Uh, thank you for having me. Great. Thank you. Uh, so today, we're just going to converse and ask some questions. I know you're here to tell us about your issues and the issues that you stand for. Mm -hmm. So we are here right now. We're going to ask you, but tell us a little bit about yourself first, and we can go from there. Sure. Um, so I am running to represent the new District 2, which is in South Seattle, um, and includes the Chinatown International District, uh, Georgetown, Beacon Hill, Soto, all the way down to uh, through the Rainier Valley. Um, I have been in Seattle for 15 years. I've been doing community development work, um, working on affordable housing issues. Mm -hmm working with small businesses. Um, I've worked with a lot of uh, neighborhood grocery stores trying to increase access to healthy food. Mm -hmm. um, and also just working with, um, with community on environmental justice issues, on community mm -hmm. policing. So um, I'm excited about the opportunity to take my passion for our neighborhoods to City Hall oh, okay, and make sure we have a voice. Well, that's great. I think we need uh, I think we need people like you here in our community especially because our immigrant community here are always uh, looking for someone to support mm -hmm. with their issues. Mm -hmm. So like you told me about, you had, especially have three issues that you really stand for. I saw on your flyer right here, um, uh, those are the important issues you have. Can you tell us a little bit about those issues? Sure. So um, I really want to make sure that our uh, neighborhood businesses that are working families have a voice at City Hall. Um, and so the issues that I'm hearing as I talk to people, knock on doors, I've been knocking on thousands of doors. Mm -hmm. um, people are very concerned about public safety. And so I want to make sure that we are moving our police department towards more of a community policing model. Mm -hmm. Um, I worry that right now it's a little bit too much of a warrior mentality. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to uh, make sure that we're implementing reforms in a way that serves the community mm -hmm. and help our police force understand that they're there to, to serve the community and to serve our neighborhoods. Um, I'm also uh, hearing a lot, obviously we've been having a community-wide conversation about affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And so making sure that we're protecting renters, that we're pr protecting homeowners, because we've also had a lot of homeowners lose their homes uh, mm -hmm. due to foreclosure. Mm -hmm. um, so putting policies in place that protect people so that families stop getting pushed out of Seattle. That's really one of the things that pushed me to run for office wow. is I feel like we don't have a good strategy for helping people stay. Uh, residents or businesses. Mm -hmm. So I want to help put in place an economic development strategy that serves our neighborhood, serves our residents and our small businesses. Um, and, and part of that is providing access to training and education. So I'm also very excited about um, the possibility of bringing a community college to the South End to give people neighborhood access mm -hmm. to um, paid apprenticeship programs, to general education programs. You know, we do have, um, at New Holly, we have some space that is set aside for higher education, but it's pretty limited to English as a second language instruction. Okay. So I'd like to see it broaden so that people have more opportunity. That's great. I really like the issues because they're sort of very important issues for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was looking at here some of the, I've been reading your flyers, okay. so I just <laughs> want to know more about it. And I see about 200% increase in homicides in South, uh, South Seattle. And there's other issues that are very important. I know uh, in our community, especially when it yes. comes to Ethiopian community or East African community in general, I see a lot of youth in prison right now doing some, I don't know what you call it, stupid stuff. And, and then some of them are, you know, just go on the wrong way because of that. They don't have any place to go and uh, like a place like this mm -hmm. to go and do some other positive things. Yep. Are you planning anything for the youth? Like you want to do something, uh, especially for immigrants from East Africa? Do you have anything you want to help in the future? Sure. Well, I think, thank you. I think, um, you know, the East African community has suffered tremendously. Um, this past summer was very tragic. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to acknowledge that the community is in mourning and, and figure out what is the right path for helping young people find opportunities. So um, I do think that 
part of it is the school system. Mm -hmm. um, we need to change the way young people, um, the opportunities that they have, and make sure that their families have an understanding of how to engage with the school system, mm -hmm. that parents know that it's okay to go talk to the teacher, talk to the principal, and understand how to support their children mm -hmm. in the school. Um, but we also need to invest more in after-school programs, in you know the basketball tournaments, the soccer tournaments, um, for boys and girls, so that they do have something to do after school. Okay. And I think um, connecting the older kids to mentorship programs, to job training opportunities, summer job programs, mm -hmm. um, is something that we particularly need to recruit for. Um, those programs are there. A lot of them are already established in the city, in our neighborhoods, but making sure that we're actively recruiting um, children of immigrants mm -hmm. uh, so that they get connected to those programs and those resources that are available. Wow, great. Uh, this is a very important thing for us. That's why I brought that up. Sure. And, and uh, as, a, as a teacher myself, this last uh, September, we have a strike going on at the time mm -hmm. because the teachers are not getting paid much. Right. And the council, all the council members were supporting us. Uh, I just want to know about you, how you're going to support the teachers when it comes to this kind of issues like salaries and all that kind of stuff. Sure. <laughs> well, I was on the picket line. <laughs> um, I went to the John Stanford Center and I walked with the teachers and took my kids down there to walk with the teachers. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I absolutely agree that our teachers need need a lot more support. Um, the legislature needs to do its job of fully funding education in the city, or in the state. Um, and we need to make sure that our teachers have the resources they need to teach in the classroom and the other supports that they need. You know, I have a child who's um, on the autism spectrum. And so I know how challenging it is because the special needs, uh, the special education programming isn't as fully resourced as it should be. Um, so I absolutely agree that our teachers need, uh, they need more support, our schools need support, and, and particularly for the South End, um, you know, the families and education levy is kind of the one tool that the city council has some control over, has some leverage with. And so I do think that it's really important that the way that money gets allocated is done in a much more equitable way. I think a lot of, it's very complicated to yeah. apply for that funding. Mm -hmm. um, and so for the schools that may not have a full-time grant writer on staff, it's, we just need to make it easier for the schools that clearly need the money to get the money so that they can do their job. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. so that's a really a good way of doing it because make it easy so they can get it. That's yeah. what it is. Sometimes yeah. it's so complicated. Some of the things you want to do to help the schools and to get there, you need some support. You know, right. If you don't have that support, it's going to be very hard, especially the PTSA, all right. those people. They not really have time, most of them, to be a good you know, PTSA. Right. And that's kind of hurts the South End schools most of the time. Because exactly. I've been a teacher for 22 years, so I know that. Yeah. Uh, I just want to, I know there's a lot of issues now. I mean, you can't do all of it. And I know you probably have about three or two very important issues that you want to help. Do you have, can you tell us about those very important issues that you want to really focus and do? Sure. Well, um, I mean, they are in the flyer. So, you know, I'm really, I want to make sure that as the city grows, that we are managing the growth that's coming in a way that's equitable and fair so that people stop getting pushed out of the city. Um, one of the ways we do that is by making housing more affordable. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, the next city council will be having a lot of conversation about what those policies should look like. But the other side of it is that we need to have people connected to better job opportunities, to better training, so that they can find living wage jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a lot more work to do in that regard. So as we grow as a city, I think we need to put in place um, policies that help our neighborhood businesses grow so they can employ more people. Mm -hmm. Um, and policies that attract the kind of industry, the kind of, you know, manufacturing um, or different kinds of industry that can create living wage jobs for people, good paying jobs that, that allow people to stay in the city. Um, so those are my two top priorities, I'd okay. say. Um, and then, of course, 
the public safety and transportation and all of the Those things are. that make a healthy, uh -huh. vibrant, safe community. Okay. Um, Equal payment for women. Those are the issues. Absolutely. I mean. yeah, that's <laughs> you know, good. we have we have a, a huge gender gap in this city. Uh -huh. Seventy-seven cents women make for uh -huh. you know every dollar that men make, and and what that really means is that we have really high child poverty. Um, so I think we need to expand. Um, you know, the city council recently was talking about four weeks of um, of paid family leave. Good start. Good start. Yeah. But I'd like to see it expanded to 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, we have to address the gender gap issue. We have to make sure that women, that families have access to affordable child care. Um, so there's a lot more we could do to support families better so that they can stay in the city. That's a good point because I see a lot of East African women sometimes, you know, they have like three, four kids and they can't come to school for the meeting sometimes right. and they go work they don't get paid so much they can't afford to put gas car all those things you know those issues are because the payment is so low right. they do very you know right. they don't make that much money and then that's going to affect the whole family and then exactly. the community and it goes on on yep. so i'm glad you are into that and just looking at that and trying to help the yep woman and to get the equal payment stuff <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the do you have anything you want to say to, not only for the immigrant community or for our community, just in general you want to say something that makes you different from the other council the people running for this council? Yeah. Sure. Well, um, as I said, I've been doing a lot of work in our community for the last 15 years. Um, I've worked with different organizations, um, Puget Sound Sage, Got Green, you know, um, organizations that work on environmental justice issues. And I... I come from a place of wanting to serve community. That's what I do. Okay. Um, and so I want to take that commitment to our neighborhoods, to our working families, um, to City Hall, because I don't feel like there's anyone speaking for our community members right now. The focus is on downtown. It's on big business. It's on, you know, developers and making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I feel like we need to shift our focus a little bit and reprioritize the way we spend our money and the way we make decisions so that we're putting people first and making sure that we're protecting our um, protecting our citizens and our community. That's beautiful because people, people first. That's what it is. Yeah. Not like the buildings in downtown. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. So the community, <laughs> small communities matter to me too. And thank you for that. And, uh, sure. I think uh, we're done. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Well, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you for having me. I know you've been running now. How many months since you started this? Oof, uh, it's been almost a year. Almost a year, yeah. huh? Uh, would you tell us your experience running through this whole year, trying to get to this point right now where you sure. are right now? Sure. Um, it's been a journey. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I've, as I said, I've been knocking on doors for months now, and it's been a real <laughs> privilege to to talk to people one-on-one -on, -one on mm -hmm. their doorstep and hear from them directly about mm -hmm. what's important to them, what issues concern them. Um, you know, one thing that has surprised me in this campaign is how many times people call me asking for help um, because they get no answer when they call other council members. And so I, I think there's a real frustration in the community, mm -hmm. that people want a leader who will be responsive, who will call back. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you don't have an immediate answer to the problem, acknowledge that people are looking for help and, and that you will try to help them. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, as I said, I'm really excited about the opportunity to represent this community, our, our new district too. And um, as I've progressed through the campaign, it's been exciting to get to know different neighborhoods. Uh -huh. You know, it's a big district, and there's different issues in different neighborhoods. So it's been it's been really fun getting to know different neighborhoods and the people in them. And um, and and I feel I feel really privileged to have had this experience. That's great. Good. So you're having a lot of good experience because you work with people most of the time. You mm -hmm. go to people's house and all that kind of stuff. So that's right. That's very important, and you. I'm glad for you that you're having very strong followers, not like us, yeah. <laughs> because we love what you do and what your issues are. So we're going to keep supporting you well, thank as much you. as we can. And um, One of the things we know about voter turnout in August, for example, was that it was 22, 24 percent, so very low turnout. Mm -hmm. um, and 
this is important. You know, city council makes decisions, budget decisions about our senior services, about, um, you know, um, uh, human services, homeless services. They make decisions about how our roads will get repaired. And so it's it's an important role that city government plays. And I think people get excited when it's a presidential election, but when it's a local election, maybe not, they don't pay so much attention. But it's right here, it affects your everyday life. And so, um, so I do think it's important for people to understand the process mm -hmm. and to be participating and be active in it. Um, you know, this is my first time running for office. Mm -hmm. uh, I never thought I would do something like mm -hmm. this, but I, I saw a need for my community. And I would love to see um, more people of color, more immigrants get involved um, working on campaigns, mm -hmm. running for office themselves. We do have some um, East African folks who are now serving in the mayor's office, serving in different leadership roles, mm -hmm. and that's incredible. Okay. We need to see a lot more of it. So I, I encourage everyone to participate. Run for office someday. Run for office. Okay, good. <laughs> um, um, you know, right now my focus is on um, the public safety issue. So I think it's going to be really important that we make sure our reform, police department reforms get implemented mm -hmm. in a way that the community wants to see. Um, I'm a little bit frustrated right now that the Community Police Commission is getting dismissed. Their recommendations uh -huh. seem to be getting dismissed. So I think it's really important that we have civilian oversight of the police department. And I think it's important that we pay attention to the recommendations that the Community Police Commission is making. Sure, well, I think, um, you know, there are many organizations in the city that are actively recruiting young people to get engaged in the political process. So Washington Bus is one that really works with youth to figure out what is what are their agenda items. Um, I'm going tonight to a meeting at the Rainier Beach High School. The youth there have organized a town hall mm -hmm. and it's not a chance for politicians to come talk. It's the youth who are gonna be telling the community what's important to them. So I think any opportunity, whether with your school, with your community organizations, um, or just reach out directly to your representatives mm -hmm. and volunteer on a campaign, intern in an office. Um, but the more you understand how the process works, the more you realize that it's really important to be involved in that process exactly. and and to vote please vote, vote. yeah <laughs> everybody has to vote it matters yeah. because that, that, like you said i like what you said this is what matters right now it's not about the presidents and everybody wants to vote for a president vice mm -hmm. president that but i think this is very important for our community because like you said a lot of decisions made here in the council of like the bus and all those things yeah. so i think we need to focus and we need to vote for this council uh, where the days are November. November 3rd. 3rd, yeah. Ballots are in the mail. They are due by November 3rd. And, you know, one of the things I've noticed is as I'm talking to people on the door, I've had people say, oh, I already voted for you. But they don't realize that they have to vote again. Uh -huh. So, okay. um, you know, we voted in August. We're voting again yeah. for November. Okay. And you have to sign the ballot. Put it back in the envelope, mail it back. Mail it on time, Or right? you can drop it at a Dropbox. Dropbox, okay, good. We're going to talk about that later in the, for our community. Great. But this is a good point you brought up because uh, we have to vote, and we have to vote again. Mm -hmm. If you voted in August, you have to vote again in November, right? That's right. So we're going to talk about that later. Okay? Great. Thank you very much for coming here and giving us all this information. I hope uh, everything will work for you. And Thank we're going to see you in the council probably one day. We're going to come and say... Uh, ask you some questions, Good. more questions, and we can ask uh, whatever comes at the time. Okay, that'll be great. Come hold me accountable. We will do that. No problem. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Tammy Morales, and I am a candidate for Seattle City Council. I was invited here to MMRTI to participate in an interview in their great studio here in the Central District, and it has been a wonderful experience. This is a great 
um, opportunity for the East African community to have a public communication venue. And um, it's a great place to come. I would encourage folks to check it out. The studio is wonderful. And it's a really important uh, medium for this community to have access to, um, to public officials to, and to share with their community things that are very important. And um, it's a great tool for sharing public information. So please come by and check it out.